This project will be very simple, like a very simple pinch pot. So use your string, hold it really tight so it's a straight line, and cut down and then across. And that'll give you a nice ge geometric shape. I usually just use it right out of the bag. I don't wedge or anything. I just want to make a nice round shape. You can bump it on the table if your hands get tired. You can roll it, do whatever feels good. This is all about the experience of just focusing on the clay in your hands. I don't usually like to add a lot of water to the clay. In fact, as little water as possible. Um, so to get started, you have your ball. Start by making a little divot with your thumbs in the middle and always rotating the piece helps create even walls. So you just want to pinch, 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 slowly thinning the walls and also th slowly making this deeper. You can also try different hand positions, feel what's comfortable for you, see what changes the pot. And I do it in an even methodical rhythmic pinches so you can start to see some of the texture that comes up too and I'm slowly going deeper it's still about an inch thick at the bottom now I can put both of my thumbs in there I might rest it and the methods I'm showing you are going to be very basic. It's going to be low on mess because we don't want to make a big mess when we're working at home. The clay dust is not good for you. So we're going to keep dust at a very minimal. Okay. So look at the thickness of the walls. Pretty even. It's about half an inch thick, three eighths. And the bottom is still thicker. The bottom needs to be a little thicker for now so it doesn't collapse as I'm resting it on the table. But the idea is to make the, the wall very even and you can see I'm rotating it as I go. Now, and the bottom is even a little bit flat now from the resting. And I'm just making a simple bowl I don't want to make it too wide at the top at first. I can always do that later. I want to focus on the whole bowl and now at the bottom when I can still reach down there. So I'm going to be thinning this out. If you see cracking, you can always smooth it by compressing the clay with your thumb or your fingers on top. So once you get cracking, typically the cracking wants to continue and it might get out of control a little bit. So kind of work deliberately. You can add a little water if you have cracking, but I wanted to keep this process without water. So you can see it's starting to take shape, just a very basic hemispherical bowl. I can close in the top a little bit by compressing the clay together in this sort of movement as I'm pinching. So kind of coaxing it together at the top and you'll see that's going to close the form a little bit at the rim. Puff out the bottom a little bit so the foot is not so flat, so it's a little bit smaller footprint. And you're handling this very carefully so you're not mushing it. Once you feel like the wall thicknesses are about equal, you can start looking at the form itself and making adjustments. I'm gonna round this edge a little bit by rotating it on the table. So you can see that gives it a different look, almost like a paddled look. You can also shape your piece with the wooden spoon using it like a paddle. It's important when working with 3D forms to move it around in three dimensions so that you get a sense of 
how it lives in the space. Where does it have volume? Where does it need to be restricted a little bit more by paddling it? So you see I almost have a dome shape. That was a quick one, but you can get more intricate with it. You can make it very, very thin if you would like. I would recommend letting it set up like this on the rim. And then going back once it stiffens up a little bit, you can go back and have it find a little foot to sit on like this. If you wanted to make nesting bowls, you would start with three different size balls before you started pinching the bowl. And you could prepare the balls at the same time, put your extra balls of clay in the bag, and then they would inherently be nested because they would have different amounts of clay that you started with. The bottom is pretty thin right now, so it keeps collapsing. So I'm gonna keep it up on the rim and let it dry a little bit. And then I can take this away, finish with your projects, bring them back to the studio, to the glaze barn, and we'll, we'll bisque them for you and you can come back and glaze.